good afternoon welcome to edusat network friend in our lecture series on soft skill today we will discuss social etiquettes this is wide area we can't cover all in uh, one hour but we will try to understand the major domain of social etiquettes like basic do, uh, etiquettes table etiquettes classroom professional and networking etiquettes we will briefly talk about the basic and table etiquettes but our focus would be to know about professional and networking etiquettes okay. and for discussion on this very topic we have in the studio Dr. Amarjit Malhotra, she is professor at one of the leading management school in Delhi, and has authored six books and presented number of papers in national and international uh, fora. And I've been also invited by uh, North Dakota State University for one term or training the students. So I think her knowledge and experience will help us to understand this topic, social etiquettes, and will certainly her guidance will help us to perform uh, better uh, than uh, so. On your behalf, I welcome her for a recent lecture you, on sir. this very topic. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Uh, very good afternoon to you all. As we all know uh, that uh, we have to live in the society, we all are social creatures and we have to think of conducting ourselves. Uh, uh, so, there is a problem. Yeah, mosquito is there. No, my face is okay. okay. All right. So, um, I was just talking to sir that this is very important topic and we all have to be very careful that how do we conduct ourselves in our personal life, in our social life, in our work life. So, all the three areas are very, very important. So, the, uh, uh, this topic etiquettes or you may say social etiquettes will be covered in detail in today's one hour talk and these were, uh, these are the areas, these are the uh, subtopics which would be covered. First of all, we will be defining etiquettes, then thereafter what are the benefits if we follow etiquettes, then domains of etiquettes, basic etiquettes, then thereafter we will be talking about classroom etiquettes, thereafter professional etiquettes, table etiquettes, networking etiquettes and finally if, we, if the time permits we will talk about time management. So this is the agenda for, the, uh, for this one hour. Uh, so, just to understand what is, uh, what, is, what is etiquette or what are etiquettes, uh, you know, if you ever observed your parents, your friends, you've been telling you that don't uh, conduct yourself like this. Had there been a marriage, don't conduct like this. Had there been some sad occasion, don't conduct like this. Did you observe what is that? Why, why it has been dictated by parents or friends or by teachers or by colleagues? Why is it so? Because over the time we have in our society a convention about different forms or different practices. We, we ourselves have developed that how should we be conducting in a given situation or in a given uh, a, a circumstance. Uh, uh, the situation could be good or bad, right? You may be uh, pr present in your classroom or you may be present in, in, in a group of your friends or may be present at your workplace. So, uh, for different places, we have different code of conducting ourselves and that is what is known as etiquette. So, basically, if we define etiquette, it is the form and the practice which has been prescribed by social environment or by authority. So, uh, basically, how to conduct, how to uh, conduct or carry a oneself during one situation is etiquette. So, uh, since we are we, we being socially uh, beings and we are living in different occasions, different uh, cultures, so every culture, every society has its own set of rules, its own set of rules to conduct ourselves. So, that is what etiquette is. Etiquettes can also be uh, known or defined as, as being pre something prescribed by authority to be observed. It means it, it, it could be either uh, dictated by the society over years gradually and it could be by some authority, right? For example, uh, if, you, if you ever visit to Gurdwara, they will not allow you uh, without having uh, your head covered by some cloth. So, what is that? That is again an etiquette but prescribed by one authority which could be some Gurdwara Prabandak committee. So, is Christians have their own etiquettes when, when you uh, visit the church. So, uh, uh, so every okay, every different uh, every religion has its own uh, etiquettes. Every uh, every society has its own way of conducting itself. So, 
important thing is etiquettes are defined or they are referred in the context of the society, in the con context of the situation. So, we cannot take them independent, they are always with reference to something. This reference could be society or this reference could be some authority. So, uh, after understanding what etiquettes are, now the point is why we are going to discuss about them, why we are going to spend one hour today to talk about them, there must be some benefit to you. So, it is important to understand different etiquettes in different situations, but let us understand their uh, benefits. So, that is why that is how you would be serious in this talk. So, the benefit if you conduct yourself as per the prescribed rule, then the benefits you may draw are like first thing is you are going to differentiate yourself from others. You will be apart from the rest of the crowd. You will not be very much like other people are conducting. Once you are actually following the etiquettes prescribed by the office or prescribed by a particular uh, authority or prescribed by your college or prescribed by your parents. There could be different etiquettes at, you, at your home even. So, if you are following them, you are going to differentiate yourself from others. This is the first benefit of, of following etiquettes or having rules in your mind which are going to be followed by you as etiquettes. Then you are going to be confident. Once you are, you are being identified by others that this is the guy or this is the girl who follows etiquettes, who has etiquettes, then you are going to get compliment. The moment one gets compliment, one feels confident. So, automatically the confident will be there, the confidence will come to you the moment you follow etiquettes. So, that is why it is important to talk about them, to learn about them. Then the third thing is the third benefit which you will draw is uh, you will start honoring the commitments which will lead to excellence. The moment you have confidence in you, you will start honoring you whatever you are committing to others. Committing means uh, it's, it, it could be uh, a kind of oral commitment, it could be a, a written commitment. Commitment does not mean you have committed something in writing. You simply committed your mother that yes, uh, uh, we are visiting our aunt's house today and I will conduct myself pleasantly. What does it mean? Did you give some written commitment to your mother? No, you did not. Simply, aapne apni mother se bola ki main aaj aunti ke yaan ja rahe hain aur main baut nicely behave karunga. So, what was that? That was a commitment to your mother and the moment you will honor that, you will excel in, you, you are going to uh, show the best quality in your conduct over there since you are committed. So, automatically excellence will uh, follow if you uh, actually uh, follow some etiquettes. So, they are interlinked. Thereafter, uh, is another very important thing is that uh, this will modify your uh, distraction. In case there is a distraction in your behavior, it will be modified. It is going to help you to modify your behavior which is negative otherwise. Why? Because there is something which in your mind that you have been asked or you have been told to uh, conduct this way or that way. The moment that guideline is there, you are going to conduct accordingly and you will not allow yourself to distract. You will not allow others to influence you negatively. So, you will modify your behavior since in the back of your mind it is there. Maybe your mother told you, maybe your teachers told you, maybe your, uh, your colleagues have told you that this is how you need to conduct. You know, whenever you go to see a girl for the first time, I mean you go for dating, do not you actually try to find out how should you be conducting yourself? Do you ever, I think this would have happened to many of you. So, do not you ever think before going that this is how I am going to conduct? Yes, I believe you do that. So, that is what is etiquette. So, basically that is nothing but uh, that how to conduct oneself. Even dating, if you are going for dating uh, and you, you are describing in your mind that this is how I will shake hand, this is how I will greet her, this is how I will uh, present a bouquet or flower to her. So, what is that? This is just a set of guidelines, a set of rules in your mind which are there, they are existing in the society which are considered to be the best. So, that is simply what is etiquette. So, in, it, in a sense, it seems to be a very, very simple thing, but it actually affects your life. 
you know if you could not conduct yourself well in front of your uh, friend to whom you met for the first time in the first date so you can imagine very well what kind of uh, impression she would have carried otherwise right you would be successful in pursuing that relationship or not it will depend upon how you actually conducted yourself during that meeting during that first date so this is this is how it is important that we should understand what etiquettes are for different occasions and how to actually carry ourselves during those occasions now after this let's uh, let's talk that what are the different domains we can actually talk uh, under etiquettes under etiquettes first of all we should have certain basic etiquettes wherever no matter wherever we we are no matter we, uh, whether uh, we are in office or in our college or at home we need to have certain level of etiquettes always so we call them as basic etiquettes after that we have classroom etiquettes so the classroom etiquettes uh, are uh, how to conduct yourself in the classroom then uh, thereafter we will talk about the most important area for you the professional etiquettes that is uh, how to actually uh, carry yourself during your office hours so that is what is your professional etiquette then uh, after that we will talk about etiquettes while talking on phone we may call them as uh, telephone etiquettes and email etiquettes and thereafter uh, the another very uh, simple and very regular uh, to be used uh, area which is table etiquettes and then the lastly we will be talking about networking etiquettes so these are the these are the various domains we are going to discuss in etiquettes so first of all let's talk about basic etiquettes in the basic etiquettes first thing is that wherever we may may be we need to be very very positive and pleasant during our conduct we need to greet our, uh, the person whomsoever we are meeting had we are at home we need to greet our parents our siblings had we been in a classroom we need to greet our friends our teachers we need to greet them even so first thing is carry a very positive attitude don't carry the agenda of fault finding don't think in your mind that you have to find the fault in the person you are going to see or you are meeting no that should not be the agenda you should be very very positive when you are actually going to see somebody so the first basic etiquette is to to carry positive attitude in the last uh, in the last talk or uh, yesterday only we had a long discussion on positive attitude and if you are carrying something from that talk you could you you can actually correlate that how much important it is to carry positive attitude when when we are meeting anybody rather it's not only that outside your family in within your family within your group uh, friends group or anybody for that matter then after that uh, when once you uh, meet somebody you should be carrying some good smile on your face you should have a comfort uh, on your face you should not be showing that you are not happy or discomfortable to see him or her that should be the first message on your face on your expressions then thereafter you uh, how to shake hand though in india we generally say namaste or sasikal or different uh, ways of greetings but let's assume if you are going to see somebody for your official meet even in india uh, most of the offices the culture is to shake hand right so how to shake hand is another important message your sh- hand shaking should be very firm you should be holding your uh, arm uh, at your waist le- uh, like height and you should be holding the hand of the person with whom you are shaking your hand firmly so it's very important to sh- hold the hand firmly it means if you are holding the hand firmly and hold it for few seconds just uh, for a fraction of a second is not sufficient for 1 to 2 second you should be surely holding the hand and that should be a very firm hold so it gives a message that you are acknowledging the presence of the person if you are just imagine you would have observed if you are shake if you met somebody and you try to shake the hand and person was just running he hardly touched your hand it what the, what was the feeling in your mind at that moment can you try to recall it it will not it won't be very good it won't be very pleasant for sure right so the point i want to say is that that uh, carry a very comfortable feeling or expression on your face 
and and greet person whether whether by shaking hand or by saying namaste with folded hand but whatever the way it may be it should be very very sure that you are attentive you are acknowledging the presence of the person then after that it's the third very important thing is maintain a good eye contact it should not be that you are shaking hand with me and you are you are looking at some another friend or you are sh shaking hand with your friend and looking at at his girlfriend right so <laughs> it's another important thing that whomsoever you are greeting you should be having a direct eye contact with the person so to acknowledge the person to give him importance then uh, after that uh, it's very important that how do you introduce uh, yourself or somebody else whomsoever if you are introducing yourself introduce nicely and if you are introducing somebody else to somebody else use appropriate title you should not be saying he is uh, he is garima for example you should be saying meet miss garima uh, meet mrs uh, batra or whatever whatever the titles they are so we should be while introducing we should be using titles that's another thing then uh, whenever you meet somebody rise and then introduce so if you have to introduce somebody you should not be uh, keep on sitting on your chair in india we have some different uh, uh, way of looking at this you will observe that in offices generally people uh, of higher status will not rise to greet or introduce to the junior or to subordinates they will only rise to greet to a senior person that's that's the culture so that the convention we have and we may say that's the practice so so this this is important that you rise from your chair or wherever you're sitting at and then introduce somebody that gives that you are paying attention that gives an environment that you are actually welcoming and acknowledging and actually grateful to the person since he is here to see you so these are these are the points uh, when uh, these are very basic etiquettes then Uh, these whatever we talked so far they are something which are visible which can actually be uh, dictated how to be uh, carried but apart from this there's one more important thing is your non verbal communication on the one hand let's assume let's say aap kisi ko dekh kar keh rahe hain aapko milkal bahut acha laga and aap face par gussa la rahe hain ya aap face par bahut ekdam harani la rahe hain so iska matlab kya hai दैट गुस्सा और हैरानी क्या है वो आपका नॉन वर्बल कम्युनिकेशन है सो इट्स नॉट ओनली दैट योर कम्युनिकेशन वर्बल कम्युनिकेशन इज गुड इट्स नॉट ओनली दैट यू आर रेजिंग योर हैंड यू आर यू आर शेकिंग हैंड वेरी फर्मली यू आर यूजिंग अप्रोप्रिएट वर्ड एंड टाइटल बट इट इज आल्सो इम्पॉर्टेंट दैट वट एवर यू आर सेंग योर योर वॉइस वट एवर यू आर सेंग थ्रू थ्रू योर माउथ सो दैट इज बीन coming through your heart that is there is a conviction in that you are saying something with conviction and conviction is means your emotions on your face are showing the same thing what whatever you are actually saying uh, by by using your uh, tongue so important is uh, whatever you say is being supported by your expressions so that's what it is then uh, another important thing is uh, show some common respect and consideration for others and it need to be remembered always so these are few basic things uh, which are taken as basic etiquettes so uh, after that uh, after this basic etiquettes the next thing we would be talking about is <coughs> uh, classroom etiquettes no uh, i assume i understand that most of you are uh, students and are <coughs> and uh, are uh, going to college so let's uh, uh, let's see that how should we be conducting ourselves in in the classroom there there's a list of do's and don'ts when we are uh, actually conducting ourselves or we, actually when we are attending the class first thing is don't use uh, some casual language while talking to your instructor instructor means your madam or your sir so don't use any casual uh, language so address the uh, don't address you know in when i was in us 
uh, uh, there it was a tendency to address the person or professor with their name and they do not do that uh, with the seniors, they, they generally uh, They generally uh, address the uh, they generally address the professor by their name. For example, uh, Dr. Malhotra, Dr. Batra, Dr. Uh, Thakur, or Gupta, like that. So that uh, there it is a culture to use a doctor as a prefix or professor, even Professor Batra, Professor uh, Malhotra, or Professor Gupta, etc. But uh, they don't address the instructor by name. Outside the class, uh, there is no difference. They may address any person, does not matter senior or junior to them in age, they may address by name, but they do not address the person by name when they are in the class. So, addressing in uh, uh, and this is very important when it comes to India. In India, we, we have a tendency or practice to address the instructor by addressing him as sir or ma'am. So, this is very important. So, we do not have this problem in our country where we do not address teachers by their name. But yes, outside class, I have observed many students addressing uh, professors uh, by their name, by some certain wrong things. So, that is very, very important that we do not uh, that we do not address professors with, with their names at all. Then, uh, then uh, the Another thing is we should not be coming to class uh, late, there should not be habit of coming to class late. Habitually coming late is different than, uh, uh, than once or once a while, it may, there could be some urgency once, once a while, there could be some genuine reason once a while, but if you make it a habit then you are showing disrespect to the teacher to the class, to the, uh, to, to the culture, so that is not uh, appropriate etiquette. So, the, this is a basic etiquette that you address the instructor with a uh, very, uh, uh, very appropriate manner, then you do not uh, come to the class late, then it is not only that coming to late, it is also important that you do not leave the class early. So, that is uh, another important thing. Apart from this, you would have observed that in your class even there are few people who try to dominate the discussion. Teacher is discussing something and you see there are two, three people who are confident, who have definitely some knowledge and they always want to dominate. So, do not try to do that. In case you are somebody who has knowledge, who is good in communication, who is confident, but he, you should not even then try to dominate. You should actually be giving chance to others to talk, to present their views. So, this is the part of classroom etiquette. Then after this, the another thing is never try to eat or drink something in the class. This is something which is disrespect to teacher. You know, uh, I would like to share here that in US there is a culture that students they do bring their eatables like some drink, some small sandwich or burgers in the class. But if they are respectful, they do not eat. They will wind up eating before, class, uh, before a professor enters the class. So, uh, few people who have been going from India, they observe this thing and they just try to follow it without uh, understanding uh, the crux of the matter, without understanding that they do not actually disrespect there in, in, in other countries. But in, in India, it has been adopted blindly in at very few places of course, uh, especially in metro cities, not in, in small areas. I have seen people in small areas, in rural areas, very respectful to instructors. So, this is another important thing that do not ever ca carry any eatable during the class hours. Then after this, uh, if you have something different, uh, uh, different opinion or if you do not find whatever is being talked in by the instructor is actually being acceptable to you. So, you have all the right to disagree, you have all the right to say sir this is not clear, but do not ever uh, confront the teacher with anger. So, difference is this, what I am saying is definitely you should be uh, expressing if you are not able to understand the concept, right, but do not confront. If some, if teacher is trying to explain, give her a, or him a, a fair chance to explain. So, it means uh, you should be uh, carrying 
uh, a very fair listening skills as well in the classroom, right? Uh, so it's not only that you should be giving tasks to your classmates and you should not be dominating the class discussion, but also give a fair chance to the instructor to explain in case you have any query or the question for the concept in discussion, under discussion, right? So after that, uh, never try to miss the class without intimating. This is something very basic cut C. You know, we take it as a granted. If our our uh, guidelines are that we have to comply only 75% attendance requirement, then we will take it as a right. But just think of it, if you informed your teacher, you have to go for some marriage, you have to attend some other series, anything, you have to take your mother or father to hospital to, uh, to see a doctor, there could be any kind of requirement at home or in social life. But just think of it, try to feel it. How will it sound if you go to your teacher and tell her a day or two days in advance, ma'am or sir, I won't be able to attend your lecture schedule for XYZ date you will observe a, such, a, such a, a warm smile on her or his face. What does it mean? It means it is required, it is desired, right? That's why it is bringing happiness on the face of the teacher that the student is concerned about missing his class and is bringing the fact in advance to her or to him. So it has been acknowledged. So as I said, etiquettes are nothing but the set of practices and the forms prescribed gradually over uh, over the years so so that's why it is important that uh, you should be uh, actually uh, whenever you are going to miss the class should be visiting your teacher in advance and informing in where whenever i actually uh, any anybody in my in my class misses the lecture in us they always inform me in advance through mail they always will give me a reason why are not they coming that's a respect, that's a way of showing respect that we are otherwise interested for your lecture but cannot under, uh, come to class because of this reason. That will be appreciated. Believe me, this is a very small thing but will be appreciated by your teacher concern. Then after that, uh, another few things that uh, when uh, I, we observed, even you would be, many of you would be doing, I have observed this is a very serious tendency in, in India. And uh, if, you, if you actually follow that, accept it right now. Uh, your class is for accounting and you are doing homework for English or for psychology or for some management or some other subject. What does it mean? You are disrespecting the teacher who is there present at that moment when you are doing the homework some of some other subject. So never do that. This is a basic etiquette of the classroom that we should not be working on some other assignment or other project of some other area which is not been taught at that moment. Then uh, do not try to bring expression on your face that you would have been somewhere else which would have been better place or you have some other place which is better to be at this moment. Like, you know, you think that sometimes you see that someone is standing very strong in front of you. He is feeling that I had to be there at this time, there was there, there was there. Is that what is with you? Then what is that? Exactly what I am saying. Don't try to make somebody else that you would have been at somewhere, other place which would have been better for you. Don't carry such expression on your face. And that feeling should not be there in your mind, only then the expressions will be there. Your attitude is the expression of your values and belief. So do not believe in this thing that you can actually show this thing. So if you will not believe this thing, it will, it will not come on your face, right? Then uh, we observe that people are making some noises during the class. Somebody playing with shoes, playing on the desk, or playing with keychain, playing with bag or buckle like that. So hota hai aisa? So that is another etiquette, not to do that. So that is against the social etiquettes to be observed during class, right? Then don't, uh, we observe nowadays there is a tendency to blow bu bubbles. People uh, chew, keep on chewing bubble gums, right? And they will keep on blowing them during the class. Teacher is uh, talking about something very important and suddenly observes, student is blowing bubbles out of the gum. So again, that is very uh, unethical and against the etiquettes of the class. Uh, you may have observed people yawning in the class, people sleeping in the class, even that is not uh, to be observed like that. 
then passing some personal comments on friends on teachers even it's not only that we we have obs observed that it's not only that you comment on on girls or boys or all your classmates we observe that you do comment on teachers as well even that is against the etiquette kindly curtail this tendency if it is there gradually and come over uh, this uh, weakness this is a weakness basically you are not acknowledging somebody you are not giving due respect to somebody or you are not conducting yourself in a in a manner you are supposed to because etiquettes are nothing but a guideline how to conduct oneself right so when you are in the classroom these are the few basic thing you must carry in your mind and at the end of the day you will feel you will be happy as i said if we follow etiquettes we we come up as a confident person and you will be confident in saying that yes i am proud that i don't do such thing which are not against etiquettes you know so that's how the etiquettes will build up so there's a direct linkage with uh, with for, uh, with the following the etiquettes and your confidence level and your performance later on right so we are done with one domain uh, uh, another domain that is uh, classroom etiquettes after basic etiquettes now let's talk about a very important aspect of etiquettes which is professional etiquettes in the professional etiquettes we will talk about grooming we will talk about how to actually uh, carry uh, yourself while you are in the office we will talk about how to make phone calls how to take uh, or uh, attend your emails and how to uh, do the networking so these are the few things we are going to cover in the in the professional etiquettes the first thing is how to groom how to groom yourself as a person you should have your uh, hair very clean uh, neatly tied up and uh, they should be styled neatly whatever suits you right then your nails should be very clean your skin should be clean your teeth should be clean these are just very basic thing and i believe we all know that but still uh, even all of us would be knowing that but did you ever observed somebody sitting uh, aside you is stinking is it so kehte hai na aap log bhi बड़े सारे नाम दे रखे होते हैं आपने गर्ल्स को बॉयज को तो ऐसा क्यों होता है बिकॉज वो बेसिक ग्रूमिंग के एटिकेट्स फॉलो नहीं कर रहे हैं वो आ, कितने घंटों एक शर्ट डालने के बाद दोबारा से डालकर आए हैं विदाउट वॉशिंग इट देर स्टिंकिंग राइट और यू मे हैव ऑब्जर्व कि समबड़ी इज यूजिंग वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग फ्रेगनेंस पर्सन इज हैप्पी दैट ही इज कैरिंग फ्रेगनेंस बट द फ्रेगनेंस कुड बी वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग right so we should not be using very strong fragrance even champi uh, champi tail and such such things are used by you right so that that is they are the etiquettes to groom because we should be knowing this we are not grooming only for ourselves our grooming affects the people around us if we are grooming in such a manner that this distracts others attention so that's against the etiquettes so basic etiquette is in the office when you are there be neat be clear uh, clean and carry your uh, tie your hair very properly and use a modest fragrance don't use a very very strong fragrance then uh, your wardrobe what about your wardrobe what kind of clothing you should be carrying when you are in office you know we have three different occasion or three different type of clothing prescribed by uh, by specialist while carrying in the uh, professional life or in the office place so first of all a person can use pure uh, professional uh, um, uh, uh, clothing so that is when we carry ourselves in a complete business suit you are using trouser and shirt with a coat on it right for ladies it could be again a business suit possibly or it could be a skirt with a coat so even that is a complete dress and uh, so we call it as skirted uh, coat or skirted suit or panted suit so it could be a suit with pant or suit with skirt so we call it as a business suit for men again it is a business suit complete suit uh, with the uh, with the uh, pant and uh, a coat then uh, you should be wearing tie uh, depending upon uh, if you are going to attend some formal meeting or not these are the things which you need to carry in uh, in a very formal meeting and uh, uh, and you 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 are expecting some senior to visit you some clients to visit you or so in that condition but apart from that there could be something which is known as uh, business casuals so 
for most of the days in our business life, we carry ourselves in business casuals. Means you need not to carry coat every day. You need to be in trouser and in shirt. Boys can wear a t-shirt occasionally, but that t-shirt should not be of v-collared. It should be always a collared t-shirt. It should not. It can be a polo shirt. It can be a shirt with collar, or it can be a t-shirt but with collars. So collars are must as per the guidelines. We may or may not be following it. You may find people not using it. But the prescribed rule is, prescribed guideline is to carry oneself in a business suit for formal meetings, formal occasion in the workplace and on day to day life in business in pants and shirts. In Indian culture, women can wear, wear shirt and trouser or may wear a sari or a, or a Punjabi Indian suit but a full length. It should be a proper length Indian suit in case some girl prefers to wear suit. Even that is considered to be formal in Indian context. So you know, as I'm say, as I said in the beginning itself, etiquettes they change uh, in the context we are talking about. You know, uh, it 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 would be the etiquette to shake hand. It is a must. Uh, for example, uh, it is a kind of must to give a hug and a kiss uh, when you are meeting, whether your father or your mother or your friend. In in most of the countries in Asia, uh, in sorry, uh, in Europe, but in Asia that is not the culture. We generally don't hug and kiss on every meeting. It hardly happens. It is there, but in a very limited uh, uh, like number number of people are following that. Most of the people greet by folding hands or saying namaste only or without folding hand even. So etiquettes are always in the context of the culture or the society we are talking about. That's why they come from the society. That's why they are known as social etiquettes. So, so that's very important to remember that in which society you are at present. So, th so you should be correlating to those uh, set of rules uh, existing in that society. Now, so these are the rules to carry yourself uh, as far as grooming is concerned. Uh, there could be occasions when you are going out. So we call it as uh, like uh, outwears for office. Outwears for men and women could be a trench coat. An umbrella can be used when you are going out from your workplace to, to see somebody for a meeting. So uh, this outwears could be uh, like trench coat and umbrella and these are these are the basic requirement. Then after this uh, the next thing is how to use telephone when you are in your office premises. First of all your tone should be very appropriate, generally it should be on silent mode. But if in case you, uh, you are not comfortable with the silent mode, your job requirement is such that you get more than uh, nominal call, calls on your phone. So better you keep it at a very, very appropriate tone of the phone, whether it is landline or whether it is your mobile. The tone should be, the ringing tone should be very, very normal, very, very bearable. It should not be very alarming kind of, it should not be something very irritating or very loud. So that's first thing. Then in your office, whenever you, you are in your office, you should not be carrying any kind of negativity on your face. Means carry the positive attitude always. You should not be always a fault finding person. You should not be somebody who is just condemning. Your job is not to condemn. Your job is not to actually confront somebody. Your job is to do whatever is being given to you or whatever your area of work is or specialization is. right? Then after this, uh, you should be a good uh, listener as well. You should be, ca whenever uh, somebody comes to you as a colleague or as a client in your office hours, be a good listen, listener. Give appropriate time to express, somebody, uh, express whatever he or she may have to say to you. So listen to him or her carefully. Give a fair time to express. So that's a basic etiquette. We should not start responding immediately. We should not start reacting immediately after seeing a person, right? So that's that's an etiquette. Irrespective, the person has been a failure. Irrespective, person has been following your guidelines. If you are a boss, if you are a senior person, and you know a, a subordinate is not been giving you results, you may be knowing that. Even then, even as a as a senior, as a, as a boss who knows the person coming to you is not giving you result, is not a sincere person. Even then, there's a demand, a basic demand of etiquettes that you should be giving him or her a chance to listen uh, to express. You should you should be listening to him or her. Then. Uh, 
uh, when it comes to phone uh, messages, you know we have most uh, nowadays uh, landlines which has messages. When you are not on your seat, the message may be recorded. So give appropriate time to listen to the detail of the message left for you on the machine, on the answering machine. So this is very important. So you know you may commit some mistake. Uh, there are different kind of people, they may have different way of expressing their concern or request whatever they are going to make on the answering machine in your absence. So be very careful, go through the detail of the message left for you. So read the name of the person, uh, read the date if, if it is reading machine or listen, if it is a listening machine, be careful while listening to the name, date time, reason of calling, why did the person call you, this is important, if somebody is calling you at your workplace, it is something important for sure, right. So and then next thing try to find out, I have missed the person, somebody tried to reach to me, how can I reach to him or her, you know that, that kind of courtesy, that kind of basic etiquette should be there and once you start developing this thing, you would be known as a person who is good, uh, who is a very good in responses, who is confident, who actually responds positively, who takes care of if somebody approaches him. Automatically there will be a positive uh, feedback about you by taking care of these very, very small things. They may be sounding very small things. They, you, I, I believe, I strongly believe that I am not talking anything new. Believe me or not, this is very, very clear to me. You all know all these things, but the important thing is to practice them. So, uh, so uh, I am just doing a small thing to remind you that we should keep on practicing these things because they are really important and they matter and they affect your performance at your workplace. Then after this, in case you are carrying your cell phone and that cell phone is not for official use, most of the time we should keep it as on a turn off mode or silent mode for sure. But, ma, but, the, but the bottom line is, I am saying if you are not expecting your official calls on your cell phone. But nowadays we, we do get uh, most of the even official calls on our cell phone. So this, this is applicable only when you are not supposed to or you do not use in, practi in practice your cell phone for your official calls. So in that case, uh, you should be keeping as a as a as a etiquette that you should not be keeping it on ringing mode. You should be keeping it either silence or turn off mode. Uh, then let's talk about how to deal with emails. Nowadays we we have internet facility in almost every office. I don't see any office without internet facilities. So everybody works on email. So the basic thing is how to conduct or what are the etiquettes to actually uh, write or receive mails or write emails. First of all, uh, always refer to the sub subject line uh, you are going to write. You should be writing the subject, uh, title of the subject should be there. You should not be writing any mail without subject. So it is, it is a courtesy that we honor that somebody is busy other person who has to read your uh, mail is, is busy and will, it will be comfortable for him the moment he will see the title or the text matter in the subject. So subject matter should be very clear, it should always be there. There is a tendency in, in Indians not to write uh, subject. So subject matter should be there in every mail. This is the first courtesy of writing email. Thus another e etiquette required is that we have, if we are answering some mail for example, we should always be targeting th that we have to address one particular question or requirement. So we have to reply a question, so the best way is copy that question if you are answering some mail and uh, paste it in your uh, mailbox and then start replying to it. So why, why is it required? In this case, you will be very, very precise. Whatever you are writing, you will be writing very concisely, you will be writing, uh, you will be uh, writing very concise and precisely and to the point. You will not miss the point to be answered. You will be knowing what is important and what you are addressing. You will never forget that what you are going to actually address. So that is how it is important that you always uh, address to the question you are answering. 
So, not only this, uh, another very important thing which we have observed in, uh, in our society is the uh, youngsters especially, they have started using short forms. They have been using uh, those text short forms which they generally use while texting, you know messaging. हम जो मैसेज में यूज करते हैं लाइक फोर को एफ ओ आर लिखने की बजाय वो यूज न्यूमरल फोर करते हैं ऐसा गुड इवनिंग में जी डी गुड एंड ऑल दैट तो हमारी ऑब्जर्वेशन एक एक बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट ऑब्जर्वेशन हमने देखी है यंगस्टर्स में वो सेम टेक्स्ट की जो लैंग्वेज जो आप मोबाइल पर टेक्स्टिंग के लिए करते हैं वो आप ई मेल में यूज करना शुरू कर देते हैं लेकिन ये आप अपने फ्रेंडली लेवल अपने फ्रेंड्स के साथ जब कम्युनिकेट कर रहे हैं तब तक तो एक्सेप्टेबल हो सकता है बट नॉट इन प्रोफेशनल ईमेल्स सो इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट यू डोंट एक्चुअली यूज दोज शॉर्ट फॉर्म्स व्हिच यू यूज इन योर पर्सनल लाइफ और वाइल मैसेजिंग टू अदर्स दिस इज रियली अ प्योर नो टू दिस नो योर मैसेज शुड बी शॉर्ट Your mail should be precise and to the point. Doesn't mean using short words. Doesn't mean show, using short forms. I hope you are understanding me, right? So there's a difference between to be precise and using short forms of the words. Then at the end, I will recommend that you should always be using your name and your contact details. It is a basic etiquette. You are writing. and you know you are not writing uh, your contact details you are asking somebody to call you and you are forgetting to write your mobile number or your landline number so it should be a practice it should be the part of the signature in fact it should be your name and your contact details should always be there at the bottom of the mail and run, uh, one thing need to be remembered that whatever you are writing on internet on email is not confidential so it is always a public material is nothing confidential whatever we are sending electronically so we need to remember this thing after this we will be starting with the next uh, context in uh, in office that is cubicles so uh, most of the offices have cubicles uh, in the premises they don't have individual rooms for all the employees uh, we may have office uh, separate rooms for few people for senior people but youngsters new beginners and a person uh, if i if i get it right i am talking to students yeah in in your first job in the beginning of your first job you i you should not be expecting that you would be getting a very huge office independent room for you you should be expecting that you may have to sit in a cubicle so when we have we are sitting in the cubicle we need to follow certain etiquettes when we are sitting in cubicles first of all keep in mind that there are uh, more people than you present in that particular area so there are more cubicles around and there are other people around you so never forget this particular point this is a basic etiquette to remember accordingly your rest of the actions will be uh, uh, altered the moment you have this particular idea in your mind remember all the time that there are another people working and sitting along with you in a different in a different cubicles you will be very very careful how to deal with uh, with your phone calls with your emails with with other people while saying while while contacting then uh, 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 whenever you take business calls remember that uh, it is possible for the other person sitting in the other cubicle to listen to you so be very careful so it's not the question of only confidentiality but it's important that you are you may be disturbing him or her who is sitting uh, aside you in the another cubicle right so uh, then uh, uh, we say it as use inside voice when you are on phone it's not only uh, that uh, you have to be careful uh, while while dealing with the clients but when you are taking a phone call be very careful because uh, rec best recommended way is to use the inside voice it's a very polite slow voice so that you are not disturbing the other one and also remember that your conversation can be heard by others so don't feel uh, like embarrassed later on if somebody which was confidential which you were not supposed to discuss there you discussed with somebody so be careful that uh, you cannot uh, consider discuss anything confidential on phone while you are sitting in a cubicle then after this uh, uh, certain rules for meeting we have to attend meetings when we in our in our professional lives uh, 
so when you are in a meeting be sure you are there on time you are you are actually you should be reaching minimum 5 minutes before time you know there's a saying there's a very important saying uh, uh, by british they say in uh, if you are uh, 10 minutes early uh, then the schedule time you are late they expect you to be 15 minutes before the time so but uh, maybe it is not possible in indian context but you should be at least 5 minutes before the schedule time of the meeting and then after reaching to the meeting you should be actually and genuinely listening careful uh, carefully to the person who server is chairing the meeting or uh, to the other members so this is a basic etiquette you should not be showing that you are though they are present physically but your attention is somewhere else as it was true for classroom that you should be listening to your teacher your uh, instructor it is very much equally true in case of a meeting as well uh then uh for meetings never come unprepared it's not a easy excuse to say that sorry i could not get time to prepare for the agenda that's not acceptable that's not going to be admired by anybody irrespective of the time constraint irrespective of the personal limitations or professional limitations or health uh, limitations it is recommended that come prepared for the meeting the moment you are prepared for the meeting you will be confident you will be contributing you will be acknowledged and the moment you are acknowledged means you are going to gain professionally you will be getting promotions you will be getting a uh, higher perks and all those things right so there is a very close linkage between these small things and your performance and the ultimate results and ultimate happiness then uh, it's also important that whatever you say in the meeting you use very concise words and you articulate your language and your sentence carefully right there's always a better way to say something so this should be in your mind always remember this thing in your mind there is always a better a way to say even negative thing there's always a better say, a way to say no even you may not agree to somebody you may not like the idea somebody you may have reasons that's fine absolutely fine nothing wrong with this but only thing is you should be careful what you what which word and which language you are going to use which sentence you are going to say you know instead of saying aap ek sochiye simple si baat hai ek meeting mein aapko kisi ka idea theek nahi lagta aur aap kehte hain kya bol rahe hain aap aise kaise ho sakta hai aapko sochna chahiye bolne se कैसा लगा आपको मेरा ऐसा कहना और दूसरा तरीका क्या हो सकता है सॉरी सर आप जो कह रहे हैं आपके पास अपने रीजंस हैं कहने के लिए एंड मैं समझता हूँ आप ठीक से कह रहे हैं सोच समझ कर कह रहे हैं पर मेरे पास कुछ और एक डिफरेंट नज़रिया है और मैं चाहूँगा आप मुझे सुनिए फ़र्क है कुछ दोनों बातों में फ़र्क लगा आपको बात तो दोनों दोनों ही टाइम पर आप अपना पॉइंट रखना चाह रहे हैं एक कंडीशन में आपने क्या किया सीधा कन्फ्रंट करा सीधा अनोयडनेस दिखाई सीधा डिसरिस्पेक्ट दिखाया और दूसरी कंडीशन में आप क्या कर रहे हैं आप कह रहे हैं कि आप जो कह रहे हैं वो ठीक हो सकता है आपके नज़रिए से मेरे पास अपना एक डिफरेंट सोच है जिसका अपना बेसिस है एंड कुछ फैक्चुअल इन्फॉर्मेशन भी हो सकती है उसके बेसिस पर मैं ये कह रहा हूँ राइट सो दिस इज वट इज़ बिन नोन एज आर्टिकुलेशन ऑफ योर लैंग्वेज आर्टिकुलेशन ऑफ योर वर्ड सो दिस ऑलवेज अ बेटर वे टू एक्सप्रेस इवन योर नो इवन योर डिस एग्रीमेंट सो दैट्स वट नीड टू बी रिमेंबर ड्यूरिंग ऑफिस आर्स और इन एट योर वर्क प्लेस इन रिस्पेक्टिव यू यू आर डीलिंग विद द जूनियर और सुनियर सीनियर ऑलवेज शो रिस्पेक्ट बोथ टू द चेयर ऑफ द मीटिंग एंड टू द मेम्बर्स it's not that you should be showing respect only to the chair he we assume chair is always the senior most authority in the in the profession in the in the office but don't assume this that you have not to show any respect to members after all you have to work with them after all they are their uh, they are your colleagues right so this is the demand uh, a basic demand of the etiquettes that you are showing respect not only to the chair of the meeting but to members as well then after that uh, uh, use what uh, uh, disagreements uh, or or uh, say no but with respect and with dignity so these are the few basic etiquettes required to be observed while in meeting after this we will now talk about uh, certain norms uh, uh, to be followed in in the workplace uh, during your uh, uh, office hours 
first of all uh, every business has or every uh, office has its own set of norms you know uh, uh, for certain businesses they have special lunch hour another may not have another may say you have you go and have your lunch whenever you get the time so first thing no whatever i am going to talk i am assuming that you all are students and you have to make a beginning in your career so considering this fact in mind i am going to talk about certain things which are a little uh, like expression little further extension of the etiquettes they are etiquettes of course but they are more important for beginners so they are important to be known and observed uh, by you if you are going to be a beginner in your career so so the first thing i will say whenever you join your office go and observe or understand the norms of that office that norms could be for a very small thing for breaking time for lunch time for meeting for workplace politics even yeah you know every office has its own norms so first thing whenever you join go and study or go and observe understand those norms then find out what are the values of the organizations every organization has its own value you know we i don't want to name here because i am at a public platform right now but we have many business houses which are known that uh, they do believe in corrupt practices and on the other hand we have many many business houses which are known that they never indulge into any corrupt practice or any mal practice what is this this is known as value or work culture or values of conducting business of that business house so it becomes important for you to understand the basic organization values and business ethics of that business wherever you join wherever you are going to work then after this uh, you should be knowing uh, like when and which condition your seniors will be communicating you know uh, you will see the president of a company doesn't write mail on daily basis you will find when after joining that uh, uh, the cfo doesn't uh, really communicate on a regular basis why is it so there is some kind of etiquettes they follow there are some kind of practices they follow right so it's very important for you to know when do they actually communicate and if they do communicate directly it should be given a very strong weightage so that's important so uh, i believe these small tips will be imp- uh, useful to you because you are students and very soon you are going to work in the uh, uh, in the business world then next thing you should go and find out yourself what is expected out of you so uh, so this is very very important thing that what is expected out of you and never remember your college days uh, don't talk about your college days so regularly over there you should keep your college days aside you should keep your personal life aside and you should actually uh, adapt and learn the environment quickly wherever you are going to work and the the another important thing is always carry the positive attitude and keep your personal life at the at the front gate of the office and only then you should decide to enter the premises if you will follow these small tips you are going to actually have wonderful stay at your place the last small thing i would like to uh, like give few seconds only how to dine when you are in, with your colleagues the basic thing is arrive on time right do not start eating or even drinking without putting the napkin on your lap uh, and uh, always wait for the indication by the host or hostess don't go and occupy any chair because there could be some special agenda in the mind of host they may have to request somebody for a particular chair right so never occupy the chair without indicated by the host wait for the indication and always order for such food which is easy to eat and uh, whenever uh, whenever you find one expensive item don't uh, don't get lose your control don't order for expensive items even right and uh, whenever whenever you are uh, talking the food is in your mouth don't try to talk on that moment uh, give others chance to talk uh, while on on the dining table or when you are dining 
and uh, do not talk about heavy topics talk do not talk about your love life do not talk about politics talk about small things movies sports games etc don't carry big discussions while you are on the table because that spoils the mood to eat so these are some basic things for eating and um, uh, if we have uh, time the last thing i can uh, one, minute. one minute okay so last thing uh, is your networking etiquette how should you be networking when you are uh, when you are in the office social gathering or which is an official one single funda one single rule is mingle mingle and mingle it means do not stick and stand to one person or to your friend it should not be that you should be searching for your friend where is my friend mohit ka hai maine uske paas ja kar khada hona hai no that should not be there you should be interacting as many people as possible but don't try to take benefit out of that you are meeting first time and and you find you are seeing some minister's son you are seeing some very senior official and you just start demanding some favor don't start demanding favor in the first meeting try to understand try to be friendly at the first meeting gradually if you develop understanding oh, it could be later right don't do that and do not think that this is your time if you are good in communication don't keep on talking all the time allow others to speak So these are the few basic things in etiquettes in your personal and professional lives. If you will follow them, you are going to be very successful. I will wind up with one small line: Be one step ahead. Practice the social skills necessary to help you make a great first impression and stand out in a competitive job market. You can actually stand out in the competitive job market if you will follow small things which we discussed. Thank okay. you. So well friend I hope this lecture benefit you uh, and with this word we conclude the lecture I thank all of you for watching lecture and on behalf I thank Dr Amarjit Malhotra for thank this you, wonderful lecture thank you very much thank you so much